The next story we're about to do on gun control, I think, is a part of this conversation. But first, Joe, how important is what Colin Powell said? I mean, he is someone who has endorsed President Obama in the past. Well, he he has. has shown frustration in the party. And it's not like he is Mitch McConnell or someone else saying we need to change. He's, isn't he in a different category, or is this significant? Why is it, it's extraordinarily significant because, yes, he supported Barack Obama two times. Um, but there are a lot of other Republicans that are required for a majority, that are required uh, for Republicans to win the White House, that are a lot like Colin Powell, that just look at the Republican Party and think that they've lost their way. Um, I've got to say, if you look at how the Republican Party reacted the first time President Obama was elected, I wrote a book that basically could be boiled down to don't lose your Al Roker at the White House. Exactly. They didn't listen. Mm -hmm. They went out. They engaged in birtherism. They called the president a racist who hated all white people. And they, they went so far right and so extreme that they lost middle America. And so, yeah, we lost another presidential election. Look at the cover of Drudge, which I think magnificently reflects the feelings conservatives, where the conservative movement is. And, you know, he links stories that people want to see, and he does it better than anybody else. This weekend, I went on Drudge, and at the top of it is a story of survivalists that are buying property, arming themselves, and building walls out west. You have Sean Hannity, who is talking about secession. You have another talk radio host whose name isn't even worth mentioning that is talking basically about uh, about how the federal government is coming in and taking weapons and you know there's there's a call to arms um, and they're going even more extreme right than they they were four years ago. This is such a recipe for disaster for the Republican Party. I thought I would never say it. But if this party continues on this trajectory <clears throat> over the next three years, then we're going to get wiped out in 16. And if we continue on this trajectory, and I think the Republican Party ceases to be a player in presidential It'll politics. When a guy like Colin Powell, Mike Barnacle, says I'm a Republican, and he's been saying this for years, and the Republican Party has been pushing him away. Every time I talk about how our foreign policy should be like Colin Powell's foreign policy for five, six years, even before he endorsed Barack Obama the first time, I would get attacked for associating with Colin Powell's very conservative, with a small c, realist approach that Republican presidents followed for years. It was the Weinberger Doctrine. It was the Reagan Doctrine. It was the Powell Doctrine. And suddenly, it became the doctrine of lefties? Colin Powell is a self-identified Republican and has been for many, many years. And with each passing year, with each passing election cycle, the Republican Party, too many within the Republican Party, try to further estrange him from the Republican Party platform, from much of what is said publicly by a lot of Republicans. Colin Powell is also a guy who has the ability and the belief that a lot of Republicans, not, some, not a lot, but too many Republicans and too many Democrats don't have, he has the ability and the belief to put country ahead of party. And that's unfortunately something that's passe in Washington. The problem, Lee, though, is uh, there are, you know, we're, we're here in New York or Washington or Boston or L.A., and the conversation is going to be different than out in the rest of the country where if you saw on the front page of the New York Times over the weekend, this mad rush to buy guns. It's not, it's not non-existent. They want their Bushmasters. <laughs> that's absolutely true. But I mean, I think we're seeing the party just splinter in so many different ways. But I thought Colin but that's pressure a... on the party. It is. It is. And I thought he also made a great point that you know, the party can't lose its grip on what's happening happening demographically in this country. That is a tremendous deal. And this is not just the party of. Uh, the wealthy, he said, and of lower taxes. It has to be, you know, many of these, many Republicans don't make this, this, as much money and pay a much higher percentage of their income in taxes, and they need the party.
parties helped too. And so, you know, I thought he, he made so many. I mean, talk, that was such a potent, what was it, 30 minutes? Yeah, and it, yeah. It, it, it really was. But Mika, let's talk about the people that want to buy Bushmaster. Yes, gun sales are moving at a rapid pace. A lot of people are buying two or three. Just to, they were buying know, as many up, as they can get. Just to get. keep up with their survivalist neighbors. Right. You can't have enough of those clips, right? I, I guess Apparently I, not. Maybe they string them around their Christmas trees. I don't know what they do with them. But Steve Ratner, this is the problem the Republican Party has made. This is the mistake Republican Party has made. They listen to the loudest voices, a small, small percentage of Americans. And Americans, by the way, uh, who don't swing presidential elections. I have been saying it ad nauseum for four years and making extremist conservatives very upset. You don't just look at what the most conservative person in Northwest Florida is going to do when they're voting. If you want to win the White House, you ask what's going to happen in Bucks County, in Pennsylvania, what's going to happen in the suburbs of Philly, what's going to happen in the I-4 corridor, what's going to happen in Columbus, Ohio. Republicans chasing survivalists and the Wayne, Wayne LaPierre fringe of the Republican Party, I'm not talking the NRA, I'm talking the extreme fringe of the NRA. That's just such a losing formula. Yeah, 